Good morning, class. In today's session, we'll be seeing the formation of a PN junction diode and its open circuited operation. By the end of the session, you will be able to understand how a PN junction diode is formed and its open circuited operation, as well as some important terms like depletion region and barrier potential. In the previous session, we have seen how a p-type material and n-type material is formed. A p-type material is formed by doping a trivalent impurity to a pure semiconductor, and a n-type material is formed by doping a pure semiconductor with a pentavalent impurity. So when you dope a trivalent impurity to a pure semiconductor, the majority carriers will be poles. So if you consider a p-type material, the majority charge carriers in a p-type material will be poles. Similarly, when you dope pentavalent impurity to pure semiconductor, the majority charge carriers will be electrons. So in an n-type material, the majority charge carriers are electrons. So how a p-n junction diode is formed? p-n junction diode is simply formed by combining p-type material and n-type material together. So when you combine a p-type material and n-type material together, what happens is a junction is formed. Junction is nothing but the connecting point between the p-type material and n-type material. So when you join a p-type material and n-type material together, it forms a junction diode, commonly known as a p-n junction diode. So this is how a p-n junction diode is constructed or it is formed. Now, what happens when you bring this n-type and p-type material together is there will be diffusion of electrons from n-type material to p-type and there will be diffusion of holes from p-type material to n-type. So that is what we are going to see. As you can see here, when we are combining p-type material and n-type material together, since there is concentration gradient, Concent concentration gradient means uh, there is high accumulation of electrons on one side and you can see there is high accumulation of holes on the other side. So in order to attain equilibrium condition, what happens is uh, this electrons, they try to move from n-type material to p-type and the holes, they try to move from the p-type material to n-type. So this results in flow of charge carriers from n-type to p-type and p-type to n-type. And this process is known as diffusion process. Okay, so this diffusion occurs due to concentration gradient. And the current resulting due to moving of discharge carriers due to diffusion is called diffusion current. And since the n-type material has majority charge carriers as electrons, so these electrons, they try to move from the n-type material into p-type material. And since in p-type material, the majority charge carriers are holes, the holes, they try to move from the p-type material to n-type material. And while they are diffusing from p-type to n-type, what happens here is when the electrons from n-type, they diffuse into p-type, they will be combined with the atoms over there and they form negative ions. The electrons, they diffuse themselves into the p-type region and there they combine with the atoms and they form negative ions. And similarly, the holes, when they diffuse from P-type to N-type, they recombine with the atoms over there and they form positive ions, okay? So as you can see at the junction, negative ions and positive ions are formed. Negative ions on P side and positive ions on N side. So what happens after this formation of ions is these ions, since they are positively and negatively charged, the, they no longer allow the flow of carriers from P-type to N-type and N-type to P-type. That is, if a hole from P-type tries to move towards N-type, they are repelled by the positive ions on the N-type. And if an electron tries to move from N-type to P-type, they are repelled by the negative ions formed on the P-type. So as you can see, this uh, region where we have positive ions and negative ions is called depletion region. Why it is called depletion region means it is 
completely depleted of charge carriers. That is, no electrons or holes are present in this depletion region. There are no electrons and holes present in this depletion region. So this depletion region also acts as a potential barrier preventing the further flow of electrons and holes. If you consider, uh, as you can see here, it acts as a potential barrier. This depletion region over here act as a, acts as a potential barrier, further stopping the flow of charge carriers from P-type to N-type and from N-type to P-type. And in order to maintain neutrality, this uh, depletion region, ex uh, uh, it uh, expands equally into both the regions, that is N-type and P-type regions. And the relationship between the width of the depletion region and the concentration doping is given by dp into na is equal to dn into nd where dp and dn are the widths of the depletion region in n region and p region and na and nd are the acceptor and donor dopings so this equation uh, holds the charge neutrality and is also called as equilibrium condition Coming to barrier potential. See, I told you that a diffusion region is formed, which, uh, sorry, uh, uh, what do you say? A depletion region is formed, which further uh, stops the flow of electrons and holes. So this depletion region acts as a potential barrier. It acts as a potential barrier, stopping the flow of the charge carriers. If you take a silicon semiconductor material, the value of this uh, potential barrier is 0 0.7 volts. And if you take a germanium material, the value of this potential barrier is 0 0.3 volts. So if you take a silicon material and if you want to have the flow of charge carriers, you need to externally provide it with an energy of 0 0.7 volts. Only then there will be the flow of charge carriers. So that is what your barrier potential is. It stops the further flow of charge carriers. That is, it stops the diffusion process. That is the barrier potential. And you can see the barrier potential of germanium is approximately 0 0.3 volts and that of silicon is 0 0.7 volts. So this is the open circuited operation of a PN junction diode. So uh, in this session, we have seen how a PN junction diode is formed and what is the open circuited operation of PN junction diode. And we have al also learned few major uh, points like what is depletion region and what is barrier potential. Okay, so the de depletion region is where the region formed, which is completely depleted of the charge carriers. It contains only the immovable ions, whereas potential barrier is the voltage that is developed across the junction, which do not allow the charge carriers to flow across it. So that is for today's session. And in the next session, we'll be studying the forward biased operation of PN junction diode. Thank you.